station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. WBAL, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. We can't hear you. We cannot hear you. My audio is up. Our audio is on. Yeah. We cannot hear you. Hello, WBAL. Can you hear me? Houston, this is station I. I have you loud and clear from, from the International Space Station. I have you loud and clear from the International Space Station. Oh, there we go. Uh, Houston, this is station I can hear Jeanette now. Excellent. I have you loud and clear. Wonderful. Uh, do we still need to go through the script with Capcom? No. Okay, we're good. Jeanette, my name is Rachel Duncan. I am so excited to meet you and talk to you while you're on the space station. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me, how exciting is it to be there and to have gone through the... Can you, can you tell me a little bit about the the process to get into the space station and, and, you know, now that you've been there for a few months, what that's like? Sure. Um, so we started in March. Um, we walked out to the launch pad and we sat there for with um, a lot of activity going on around us for about almost three hours. And then we lifted off and it was an amazing feeling. It was um, truly exhilarating. Um, we were like kids on a roller coaster ride at an amusement park, but it was way better than that. Um, and then, you know, for about 30 hours, we kind of um, uh, orbited the Earth, and we, then we rendezvoused with the International Space Station. And when we docked, it was when the hatch opened to see our colleagues to actually be here. It was surreal. Um, so the whole process of getting here was... Uh, just amazing, and it was a lifelong dream. It was um, 15 years in the working in the works for me, so it was a beautiful day for me. And then it's now 161 days that we've been here, so um, I feel like I live here. And I think when it comes time to undock, I've, I'm going to feel like I'm leaving my home, and I have to move elsewhere. So living here has been just amazing. So many great things have happened. Um, so many interesting events also have happened. And um, we just like living on Earth. Um, this is our home. Um, we've had visitors. We've had visitors come and stay. So it's been a uh, just a truly marvelous adventure for me. So I have to ask, you said 30 hours in orbit after you just are doing the most probably incredible thing of your life. Did you sleep at all during those 30 hours? Um, I guess one of my super um, abilities is to sleep anywhere. I was so excited on the launch and leading up to everything that I actually slept pretty well those 30 hours. We didn't have a whole lot of activities of things that we needed to do, so um, you could actually sleep that time. Um, I didn't sleep the full 30 hours. We had to keep the cabin clean. We had hygiene and different things we needed to do, but for the most part, it was really comfortable inside the Dragon capsule. That's awesome. Tell me, tell me a little bit about some of the research that you're doing on the ISS. Well, I've been um, fortunate to um, participate and help the researchers on the ground with some amazing experiments. Um, last week, I was working with my Japanese colleagues on a plant experiment where we're looking at regular light and uh, UV light, and we're seeing how plants grow in space. So that's one of the um, very cool things that I've had the opportunity to participate in. But also, I'm an experiment. So, you know, our European colleagues are looking at immunity 
assay. And that's the name of the experiment. But what they're really looking at is the immune function of each human being. Um, this time it was just Matt and me. Just look at how our immune function changes over the 160 days that we've been here. And in the past, we weren't able to look at immune function on orbit real time. But now through a process that they've developed, we can go through, we can um, collect our own blood, we do our own blood draws, and then we can process the blood here on orbit. And that is about a two to three day process to do. And so being a part of these experiments where we're the hands and eyes for all the researchers on the ground um, is exciting. It's hard to develop a good experiment that will work in orbit. So kudos to the experimentalists and the scientists on the ground who put together these amazing experiments and we get to be their hands and eyes to perform it. Have you already found anything um... Uh, noteworthy or interesting about that research you're doing for your immune function? N not yet. A lot of the um, research is frozen and then it's shipped back to the ground and then they do the post-processing once the experiments are done. And so while we're here, we really don't see the immediate results. But for some of the plant stuff, we may see actual plants growing and we may, who knows what we'll see as far as the differences in the plants that we're studying. So we may see some real time stuff, but this is a really new experiment started just last week and it'll take several weeks to get it to fruition. Okay, um, what type of plants are you are you growing? Is it, you know, like vegetables, herbs? Is it just flowers? What, what are you growing? So right now we're using um, a standard plant, Arabidopsis, and we're looking at how they grow in space. They're relatively small, so we can see how they grow rapidly. Okay. Um, have you um, ever been on a spacewalk? Have you been able to do any of that stuff yet? Not this increment. So we've uh, attempted two spacewalks. Um, we had one that was probably the shortest in the history where there was an issue with one of the connectors and it leaked. It leaked a lot of water. So we had to bring our colleagues back inside. So I've been the person working along with my other colleague, Matt, to suit up the spacewalk folk. Whoever's going out the door, we get them suited up, we get everything checked out, and then we put them in the airlock, we close the hatch, and then they open the hatch to space. Um, we haven't been able to complete a spacewalk on this mission, but hopefully um, in the near future, um, several other spacewalks will take place. I may be home for that, but who knows what'll happen in the future. Okay, um, and I was wondering, so there's the, um, we've been on Earth hearing all about um, the two astronauts that are kind of stuck up there, so you've got a little extra company for right now. Um, do you expect that that might impact you on a, your timeline for coming home? No, that shouldn't impact our flight home directly as it is. We have a, a cadence of launching and docking and undocking. So we've got a lot of things going on at NASA. Um, Starliner is here. Um, it likely will leave soon, um, and then we'll have um, we'll have a couple of missions like the Europa mission uh, for NASA, and then we'll have Crew Nine coming and take over the reins. And so um, we'll see how all of that stacks up with the um, schedule. Okay, and then I um, I know you're already in this incredibly elite group of people as being an astronaut, and then when you, you know, you're even more elite with the fact that, from what I found, there have only been 18 black astronauts in space. And I believe you're the sixth black woman in space. What, what does that feel like to know that you ha are this big moment in history and for the future of telling kids they can do anything? Well, you... It's a huge responsibility that I'm willing to take on. Um, I do think that there's room for everyone and we do need more representation. There's a lot of women that I know personally who can do this job and do it very well. Um, I, my message to young women is I want to tell them about all the work that I did to earn a spot up here and let them know that this is the work 
kind of work you'll do if you get this spot. These are the things that you need to become an expert in, become very adept in, and prepare yourself for the next level. So I think it's a huge responsibility. I think um, we do need more. Um, and I do think that I have, I know of several people, several women who are up for the challenge. Okay. Um, and I wanted to go back to another question about research. Do you feel like the work that you're doing and the, the research that you're doing will help when it comes to missions to Mars at some point and, and really trying to expand what we already have? I, I really do believe that. I think that everything that we're doing will help us to get to the moon and stay, develop a permanent presence on the moon so that we can figure out all the things that we'll need before we go to Mars. So some of the things looking at the human body and developing countermeasures to get the human body to live longer outside of the Earth's protection, building structures on the moon, how do we do that on Mars? How do we build a system that can scrub the carbon dioxide and use that for plant systems to grow plants, potentially maybe on the moon and then on Mars? Um, how do we um, develop the proper propulsion systems that we'll need to get us further and further in space? So a lot of the work that we're doing now, likely, more than likely, will help us get to the moon, stay on the moon, and then go forward to Mars. Okay. Now, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions, and I know I, we wanted to get you to do a floating demonstration and stuff like that. I do have, oh, look at that, the microphone. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love how your iPad you and myself. <laughs> Velcro for everything because everything floats up here. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, so I saw it. So back in uh, 2016, Mark Kelly famously snuck the gorilla suit onto the International Space Station and scared his uh, fellow astronauts. What What's the pranking environment like? I, I figure you guys have to find ways to stay light and, and, and have fun. What, what, what does that look like for you? Well, how about we demonstrate? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so as you can see, um, the pranking environment is strong up here and um, <laughs> kind of like um, <laughs> it is a, um, a beautiful environment to work with. And as you can see, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> that does look, that looks like a blast. You like, you guys look like you're a family, you know, and, and that just totally came across just there. Um, well, I mean, this is, we've had so much fun up here. So, yeah, it's been a great time. Um, like, that's why I think one of the things that I, when I'm leaving, when we're undocking, is going to be like leaving home. Um, tell me, what do you, um, oh, hold on. Um, what do you, so what foods do you miss from Maryland? I know you went to University of Maryland, if you want to talk about that for a little bit. And then I wanted to ask kind of like, what, what do you miss from back here? Oh, Maryland um, became my second home. Uh, I miss my family. I have a lot of family um, who moved there from Syracuse, New York. Like my twin sister lives there. Um, I miss Maryland crabs um, big time. Um, one of the blue crabs, one of my favorite dishes. Um, and the University of Maryland. The University of Maryland was so good to me. Um, and they're still, you know, big supporters. My advisor, Dr. Chopra, um, you know, the um, president of the University of Maryland, um, Dr. Pines, was on my dissertation committee. And, you know, all of these folks really have supported me through thick and thin. And I owe them a, a huge thank you and just a huge debt of um, gratitude. All right. Well, it looks like we've only got a, about a minute and a half left. So is there any message that you want to give people back home? Any message that you want to say to people as you're up there right now? Oh, there's tons. I want to say go Terps. Uh, hello to my family, my twin sister, Janet, um, Brian, my brothers, my other brothers and sisters, Michael, um, Patricia, Brenda. Um, University of Maryland, of course, and, um, you know, I used to work in that area in Virginia, so I'd say hi to all my friends out in Virginia as well. 
All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. This is honestly a dream come true. And I am so excited that I got to talk to you. And I appreciate all of you taking the time and, and everything. Well, thank you for having us. And as you can see, my colleagues, um, we have a great time and we, we welcome um, all the conversations. So thank you for choosing us as well. So have a great one. All right. Thanks. You too. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, WBAL. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communication.